G'day guys. So right now we're in the middle of the global pandemic coronavirus and a few questions I've had asked lately is can we infect our reptiles and can they infect us? Well stick around in this video we're going to discuss this very topic. G'day guys and welcome back to Cookies Critters. So if you are new to this channel, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. As I mentioned in the introduction, today we are discussing coronavirus and reptiles. Some of the topics that we're gonna discuss in today's video will be the origins of coronavirus, a case study involving a companion animal that has contracted the virus. We're gonna debunk a few of the myths along the way. And at the very end, we're gonna give you some safety precautions to keep yourself and your reptiles safe. Okay guys, so I want to start the uh, the origin story of coronavirus with uh, a bit of backstory to the virus itself. So the, the virus does have multiple strains and the one that particularly affects us as humans is COVID-19. Now scientists, researchers, uh, everyone's been looking into what the, uh, what the origin host of COVID-19 was, whether it was a, a human host whether it was an animal host, and uh, particularly pointing fingers at reptiles and more so specifically snakes. So during this study, they did about 200 genetic screenings across a wide variety of animals that had coronavirus. So the research and the data published by the CDC, the uh, Center for Disease Control, uh, stated that only birds and mammals could be infected by COVID-19 and not reptiles. So when it was initially suggested that snakes were the primary host for COVID-19, it's because they found traces of the virus on snakes at the seafood market at Wuhan, the, the, the primary epicenter of the virus. So the two snakes in question are the Bungaris multisinctus, which is the many banded crate, and the Naja Atra, which is the, the Chinese cobra. So the, uh, the logical explanation for the, uh, for the two snakes having found uh, traces of coronavirus on them was potentially because uh, the seafood market in Wuhan was the epicenter for the virus and infected people that had contracted the virus were potentially handling these animals, therefore transmitting the virus onto the animal. Now, it doesn't mean the animal was actually infected with coronavirus, but it had trace elements of the virus. Okay, so a virologist, so someone that studies viruses, uh, and his name is uh, Paolo Eduardo Brando. Now, he's done some studies and his conclusions that he's published have since stated that reptiles cannot be infected by coronavirus or COVID-19. So that being said, some information has been published to say that in rare cases, rare cases, the, uh, the animals can mutate the virus to make it transmittable to humans. But anyway, we'll, um, we'll cover that in a bit more detail. Okay, so onto the story of a uh, companion animal that has contracted COVID-19. Now, in Hong Kong, there was a, uh, a Pomeranian and he was found to have trace elements of the virus. Now, his owner, a, uh, a female, she was infected with COVID-19. Now, when the animal was initially tested, the, the positive reading came back as a, as a weak positive, right? So as a safety precaution, the Hong Kong authorities, so the, the World Organization for Animal Health, uh, quarantined the animal just as a safety precaution to make sure that it wasn't then gonna be transmitted and you know, further spread. So upon you know, frequent testing and studies, the, uh, the animal itself was not found to have any kind of illnesses, uh, any kind of signs or symptoms of COVID-19. So while it was carrying the infection, it, it actually wasn't ill from it. And this has been seen uh, back in 2013 when the, uh, the world was really in the, in the thick of SARS and uh, even MERS, so your uh, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Now, both of these conditions are very similar to coronavirus in the way it attacks your body, and uh, all the evidence and data found during that epidemic 
was that while animals could be infected, they wouldn't necessarily get sick from it. So when the, uh, the World Organization for Animal Health and the, uh, the Hong Kong authorities had finished their testing and their assessment of this little Pomeranian, uh, all the experts concluded unanimously that the animal himself had contracted the virus from a human, so human to animal infection, um, as opposed to the animal being the, the host and therefore infecting his owner. And they went on to further say that at the moment, currently there is no evidence to prove that the animals can then transfer it onto humans. So the World Health Organization, the CDC and the World Organization for Animal Health went on to further publish some information, some guidelines for what to do if you are infected and you're quarantined in relation to your animal care. So the first recommendation is if you're infected and quarantined, then try and minimize or completely remove any kind of animal contact. So that means that you might have to get someone else in your family who's not infected to do your animal husbandry, your, your cleaning, your feeding, all that kind of stuff. The next recommendation is, uh, is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, especially us as reptile keepers, we should be doing this anyway, is uh, maintaining good hand hygiene. So uh, in between contact with your reptiles and between your reptiles, you know, specifically it should be done anyway, uh, you should be sanitizing and maintaining uh, good hand hygiene. So the final recommendation was more geared at the people that couldn't have someone come in and care for their animals, do the daily cleaning and feeding routines. And so the, the final precaution was to wear surgical masks and latex gloves. Now, essentially this is just gonna break that barrier between yourself and your reptiles, between yourself and your fur babies, uh, to prevent the, the transmission from us to them, and then from them to us if it is at all possible. So guys, I want to reiterate here that the, uh, the information today presented in the, uh, in the video is from the World Health Organization, the CDC, and the World Organization for Animal Health. So, you know, a collective bunch of, uh, of researchers, scientists, doctors, uh, people in the medicine field have, uh, have published this information. I've just interpreted and relaying it to you. Now, as the virus is, uh, is quite new and scientists don't particularly understand uh, everything about the, uh, about the virus, uh, as more information is released, if there's anything conflicting in today's video, I will do a, uh, a new release in the future as it comes up. So guys, I'd like to thank you for watching today. I hope you found the video informative and I hope it's put a few concerns and a few fears to rest. Now guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your beard is heated.